Welcome back to Mrs. Wizard's Way. And today, being that I'm a car girl, I thought I'd share with you the 20 cars that I've had through my years. Let's get started. So I got started driving really young for what we consider today. In Kansas, when I was a kid, you could get your learner's permit at 14. And so I started driving as a freshman in high school. Isn't that crazy? So we're back in the late 80s, okay? You know, I'll date myself, it's okay. But my first car was a 1972 F100 Camper Special. Here's an example of what it looks like. It's not the actual one because I don't actually have a really good picture of it. It wasn't my favorite car. That was the family truck. Everyone has a truck in the family, it seems, and so especially here in Kansas. So my parents bought it pretty much new back in the 70s, and it was just always in the garage. So if we ever need to haul something, get in the truck. And so I was got in the truck when it was time for me to drive. Now, there's something wrong with the brakes, and so mom didn't let me drive it for very long. It wasn't that they didn't work. I think it was just kind of spongy. And I really wasn't too heartbroken to give it up because by the time I had it, I was already over 20 years old, and some of the, the structure of the vents was deteriorating. So if you turned on the vents, it blew crap at you. <laughs> and being a 14-year-old, um, the only option you had for a stereo was an AM radio, so that definitely was not overly popular as well. But it was a fun car. It, was, it, was, it got me around. I only had a couple of miles to drive to school and back because we lived a couple of miles outside of town. It was far better than riding the old yellow school bus. So that was my first one. That got replaced with an 86 F-150, the most common truck on the planet. Here, here's an example of what one looks like. Again, not the one that I actually drove in high school because, again, didn't have a picture of it. But I drove that one for a couple of years. It was a good truck. Um, didn't have any complaints. At this point, he never said it was truck and truck. Yeah, it's because my dad had a, his own carpentry business. And so if there were times where he needed to use the truck, guess who got <laughs> kicked to the side on driving that day? Now, luckily, he didn't need the truck terribly often. And sometimes he would be ever so generous in trade what he was driving, which was a van. Yeah, he liked vans because he could put all of his tools in it, close it, lock it up. It was all secure and, you know, made it easy for him, but not so great. I hated driving the van, but full-size Chevy vans for a long time if I had to for a day. But that was my second one. The third one I had, so again, another truck, is an 89 red Dodge Dakota. And again, here's another example of what one looks like. Again, it's not the exact car. We're getting there, I have some of the exact car. <laughs> so we drove that for a little bit. So this 89 Dodge Dakota, I get this in, you know, early 90s. The reason we got rid of the gray F-150 was because it wasn't very good on gas and it was getting pretty high in miles. We didn't, we bought it with a lot of miles and we put more miles on it. So it just, it had a short life and we knew that. So the Dodge Dakota, I drove that when I got to college, drove that back and forth and back and forth to college because I did stay at home and we wanted something a little bit smaller, something with better mileage, but again, bought it with high miles and dad would need it occasionally. And then again, I got stuck driving the van, but that was, we drove, I drove that for the longest time. Then mom and dad were like, okay, so the next kiddo is coming up. My little sister is needing something to drive. And so we said, hmm, we're going to get rid of the Dodge Dakota because it was just a little too small for what he needed. He needed something a little more power to it. So they ended up getting her a bigger Dodge truck, a Ram, and they needed something for me to drive. And so the solution was I got an 89 Grand Prix gray. Again, another example of what, one, what it looked like, but not the real one. I liked that car. It was a great car. Um, better on mileage. You know, I had to, they bought the gas. I had to pay for college. That was the agreement. Yeah, they would pay for the car, my food, where I, because I lived at home. They'd pay for all that. I had to pay for all my tuition. Okay. So I was making <laughs> all those tuition payments, working a couple of jobs all at the same time. But it worked well. Good car um, until it started to overheat all the time. Yeah. It had gasket blue. And so obviously its time was done. Luckily, number five was I was just getting out of college. I was just about to graduate. I was able to start making car payments. I was working enough that I could start making car payments. So my next one, number five, was a 93 Chevy Cavalier. White. Again, another example. 
this one, I still remember the car since notice that this is the first car I am buying. So out of college, get my first teaching job. I still remember the car payment is $185.01. I don't know why they added the one cent because it was probably like a three year loan, two or three year loan. So I don't know why they just couldn't add 24 or 36 cents at the end, but whatever. Maybe it was a very odd loan payment. So had that car for a long, long, long time until it pretty much died. Then number six is a 96 Chevy Blazer with the Vortec engine in it. This was the first car I bought that was over $10,000. And at that time, oh my gosh, that was a huge amount. You know, you know, remember all those old codgers and all those boomers, even then, oh, I ain't paying that much for a car. Even then at that time I was saying, I'm not paying. But that's how prices were going. So like that car, now the baby blue color of it. Um, had that for the longest time. I was driving that when I met the wizard. That is the car that the fuel pump went out the second week I had met him. <laughs> and yeah, he helped help me get the car home and then help my dad. The two of them work together and were able to get that replaced. But yeah, that was <laughs> the car I had when I met the wizard. And that one, um, the four wheel drive went out on it. And so obviously when you're having transmission problems, they're either cheap enough to fix or they're time to let it go. And it was time to let it go because it was getting some high miles on it as well. So that one went on its way. So this is the, the next car. It's the first car that the wizard and I bought together. So we're about early 2000s, okay? It's a 2001 Nissan Pathfinder. Gold color. I love the gold color, by the way, because it hid dirt really well. At this point, we were still living out in the country, and so dirt was about the same color. And so you could wash it, it could take a couple weeks between washings, and you wouldn't see the dust on it so much. Another thing about the Pathfinder that we really liked, it had a VHS player in the back. Not always convenient when you needed to trade out tapes, but we drove this thing everywhere. This was, we never rented cars to go on trips, we just took the car we had. And so this one actually went all the way to Niagara Falls from the Detroit side. My sister was in Detroit at that point. So we crossed over the bridge there into Windsor and hopped on over. And we saw New York from the Canadian side. So it did a long road trip and it did a really good job. The only problem it had was it had a vibration when you were driving. It didn't bother me as much, but the wizard is extra particular with his cars and it really bothered him and he tried to figure it out. But without having the shop and the lifts and all the tools we have today, we weren't able to really get it isolated down and it may have been something much more substantial than we really wanted to tackle at that time. So when it got to be too high of miles, time to let it go. The next car we get is an Oldsmobile Alero. Another gold car, which again, I liked because it hid all that dirt. Four door, so it was nice to get kids in and out and you know, dragging them here and there, getting them in the car seats and everything. But that was a really good car, super reliable. Um, never had any major trouble. The only major trouble I've had so far with any of the cars I had owned was that Grand Prix with the head gasket. Other than that, everything I've had owned has stayed really well maintained. Maybe because I'm noticing things and saying, hey, something's going wrong, something didn't work right, like the fuel pump. But we got it taken care of and it wasn't like it stranded us or it was some astronomically expensive item. The next one I actually inherited from the wizard. Yeah, it was an 06 Mustang and it was, it was the V6, it wasn't a GT, but it was a V6 with a stick shift. And we know how much the wizard loves stick shifts. He liked the car for the longest time, he really did. But then he got tired of the clutch, pushing the clutch, pushing the clutch, pushing the clutch. And so I ended up with it. I was like, I can handle that, I can drive it. It was a fun car to drive. So. Still dragging kids around, throwing them in the back seat, you know, it's just even though it was a two-door, they liked it, they had fun. I think they liked that some of their friends thought it was a cool car. So when they roll up to like the swimming pool in, in our little town, they're like, oh wow, nice car. And I think they cut our kids kind of like that. But the only trouble with that, it was black on a dirt road. It wasn't always the easiest to keep it clean. It started to have some trouble that we're like, Wizard's like, yeah, we're not gonna be fixing all that. It's just a little bit too much to, to take apart to do without you know, sending it off to the shop. And he's like, you know what? I think we can just go ahead and find something else. Cause by then we'd put a lot of miles on this car. Actually, 
One time I took the kids up to Colorado, and those of you who are familiar with Rocky Mountain National Park, I took that thing up Fall River Road. It was a little challenging, a little annoying, because you know how people start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, and you're constantly going up, up, uphill. But it was still fun, we still had a ball, still made lots of little stops along the little curvy road that goes up there. But yeah, that car went everywhere. Here we are, number 10. And this is a 99 Land Rover LR1, the Discovery 1. And it was great. I loved that thing. We drove to Tulsa to pick it up, unbeknownst to us at the time that they had not maintained it well and the head gasket blew. Luckily, we were almost home. I was a little annoyed because Wizard's like, oh yeah, it shouldn't take us that long to get there. We can do this right after school. Mind you, um, I had to be up at five o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, he's like, you just go on. He, he's calling me on the phone. Yeah, yeah, it's over here. I think I'm just gonna stop or let it cool down. Yeah, you go on home, it'll be fine. So I did. It was like midnight. I still had to be up at five. So other than that, being a good story to tell, it was a little annoying <laughs> for that part. But after the head, after the wizard got the head gasket taken care of, that thing was so much fun. It wasn't my daily driver but it was a great snow car, just haul things around in, just get from A to B if I needed to, you know, haul something around. But I love that things was so good. And it was at that point, really reliable. And it had a few creature comforts that made driving in the winter like heated seats a lot more enjoyable. Number 11 is a 2012 Honda Insight, which kind of looks like a Prius. They weren't very popular here in the States, but Wizard actually bought this one brand new. It's our only brand new car we've ever bought. And I'm not exactly sure why he ended up buying it, but he wanted something to be much more fuel efficient because at this time, he's still working at that machine shop in Wichita. So we're driving, both of us are driving to Wichita every day. So it's like a 30 minute commute. And so that's about 30 miles here in Kansas. So you're like, oh, it's, you know, 30 minutes, it's like five miles. So now Kansas, not heavy traffic, 30 there, 30 back. So we're definitely racking up the miles on the cars we're driving. And so he drove that thing for the longest time. And then I inherited it because he found some other car. He's like, oh, yeah, this is a great car. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can do that. We can switch over. I can, we'll let the Mustang go and I'll take on this one. But it was a really good car. We told that the baby chicken. <laughs> I don't know, because it just looked like this little puff, this little blue <laughs> chicken, I guess. But this one is, it was, it went everywhere. We drove it again, several vacations, packed the kids in it, and off we went. But that one was really good. Not exactly sure other than the miles why we got rid of that one, because there was nothing inherently wrong, probably just because we found the next car. And in this case, the next car, and here's a picture of me standing next to it, is a 2001 Jaguar XJR with supercharger. It had 400, okay, 390 horsepower. Got it from Hoovy, who actually, who had had it before that was Magic Mike's, which we didn't know Magic Mike at the time. Um, but that was a really super fast car. That was the first luxury-ish car I'd ever had. When it was new in 01, it was like $118,000. 14 years later, 2015, and it had depreciated down to about $5,000. So even though it was a really nice car, it wasn't worth that much because of how much it could cost to fix things. But all the, everything worked on it. It was super fast. Uh, even the easy in and easy out on the seat still worked. It was, you know, it was a good, good car the ring started to go out on it. And I wish we would have just fixed that, but again, we're not working, we don't have our own shop, we don't have all the tools and equipment we have today, and it's just really not cost effective to send it to a shop to get that repaired. So we went and traded it. That's when the wizard found the 1976 Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, and they had the wiring ripped out of it. We have a video for it. I'll put a link there if you'd like in the description, go watch that. Yeah, I thought, oh, this will be great. We can get it. And it was a beautiful car. I love that Rolls Royce. The colors were great. But yeah, the wiring was just way too much. He tried and tried when he had time to work on it. But you know how it is, you know? It's hard to get motivated to go out and, you know, rewire an entire car. But that's where it went off to be. That's okay. It was a fun experience having that car. And I had moved on also. Because at this point, this is where I get the 2012 uh, Mercedes ML350. And that one actually started to appear on some of our videos on the Wizards channel at the very beginning. We didn't actually have a full video on it, 
when I when we got it because I already had it before that. But we picked it up locally, so we bought it here in the area. It was a great car. It wasn't super powerful, I mean, because it, but it was good enough for what we were doing. It was large enough we could, you know, get things around, get kids here and there and everywhere. No mind you, the kids aren't in car seats anymore. But again, they seem to always have stuff they need to take with them everywhere. So, but yeah, that was the ML350. That was a really nice Mercedes and didn't really ever give us any trouble that I remember other than minor, just, you know, obviously oil changes. Cause again, this is when I'm still teaching, which means driving back and forth and back and forth. Traded that Mercedes for the 2015 Land Rover Discovery Sport, which we did a video on, of course, but here's the picture of it when we actually bought it at the local dealer. And it was a really good car. It was a little bit zippier, had a little more oomph to it, I guess you could say. And really good car, never had trouble. One thing that was nice about that is that that was the year that Land Rover was also owned with Ford. And so some of the pieces and parts that were in the engine bay were Ford. So I did notice one day, I got a whiff of antifreeze, call wizard. She's like, do you see anything dripping? I look underneath, no, there's no dripping. It's like, okay, drove straight from school to the shop here in town, here in where we are in Newton, no more for Newton. And I pulled in and said, he looked at it. Yep, the water pump was leaking. And so he was able to replace that with a Ford water pump, which was half, a third, what it would have cost from the actual Land Rover version. So that was about the only major problem we had with that. So number 15, we're talking we're about 2019 now. That's when I got the 1993 Cadillac Elante. This was the pair to the double mint, what I think Tyler called that when he, he got the white one. I ended, we ended up getting a red one from him. And this was my first second car. And so this is a, not my, obviously a daily driver. You would not have a very old 93 North Star as your daily driver. <laughs> not a good idea. And it's also fun. It was a little convertible. So it was fun, except, you know, I had it for a little while, but it had its own quirks and features that as Doug calls them is nice and cute, but they were not cute on this one because these are the quirks and features that cause problems. And so when it started to cause more problems and then when a car gets unreliable for me, I am done with it. It's gone, get it away from me. I don't want it anymore. So that video like we did for that Audi and the wizard channel about the lady who just said junk it, I can feel for her because you want something that's reliable. And that was starting to get to be the case with the Elante. It was like, no, this isn't reliable. I need something that if I get in the car and I turn it on, that I know I can get from here to there and not have to worry. And so that was the reason we didn't keep the Elante. It wasn't because the head studs in the North Star, it was because it just was not reliable in other areas. After we got rid of the Elante, I was like, oh, I really like that convertible. So then Wizard's like, hey, well, let's just go find you another one. So we found an SL500. And again, the rest of the pictures you're gonna be seeing here are gonna be from splash screens from videos we did on his channel. And that was a fun car. It was nice, it was, it was reliable, got in, could drive it, no trouble. Had minor little things that needed done, a few little like, cosmetic issues. Like I remember the back shelf, the leather needed to be rewrapped. And so little things like that. He probably had lots of more stuff underneath. I just don't remember what they are anymore, but it was a good little car until, as we know with a Mercedes of that era, the hydraulic cylinders started to cause issues on the convertible top. And we know that they can be repaired and replaced. Actually, they're rebuilt. We have to remove all the cylinders, about a dozen of them, ship them off to Kansas City, get them rebuilt, bring them back, get them installed. But we're like, you know what? I really, it's just more than we wanted to spend on a, you know, just a fun little zippy little around town car. So we're like, okay, we can let that go. Again, this is not the daily driver. You know, the Land Rover Discovery Sports, still the daily driver. That's the ultra reliable one. But the little zip around town car, that, that was the little Mercedes. And so it was okay. I was okay with letting that one go. This should be where number 17 is, but I'm really not going to count this as 17 because um, we're at a 2021 right now. And this car technically isn't mine, but it is mine. Um, it's the 78 Ferrari 308. And we joke about that being my car because it's just kind of gotten to be banter between the wizard and I. But I've driven it twice and you know, we'll get it finished. We'll get it, you know, have it for a minute or two, and then we'll probably pass it on down the line. But 
I don't, didn't want to forget that being that this is my car, but really it's not been my car. It's been a car we have shared and we've shared several cars over time. Some that we both evenly have, like we currently have a, a, the Nissan Juke that had the staple in the oil that got picked up into the oil. Um, yeah, that uh, we, we shared that one. That's our winter car. So if we just need to get around, we don't want to drive any of our nicer cars or maybe if somebody needs to borrow one, our kids have borrowed at a time or so when their cars were down or one of the guys at the shop just needs to, you know, we need to go run for a part, we'll take that as well. So we do have some cars we have shared that wasn't anybody's specific car, but the cars I'm listing and counting today are the ones that I considered as my car or my daily drivers. So number 17 actually is my current daily driver, my 2018 Maserati Levante. And the reason we got that is, okay, well, the wizard's like, hey, we're out of town. We should just go stop. Let's go go to that dealership. They've got some really good brands. And we're like, no, no, I really like my Land Rover. I like the Discovery. And we get there and we're looking around like, wow, I really like this Levante. This is a really nice car. And he's like, oh, we should look at it. And they start talking. Okay, okay. And we're like, and of course, what do you do when you go to a car dealer? You drive home with something different. And that's what we did. And so I don't regret that. I still like that car. I am not having any intention of trading that off at the moment. Um, Wizards even thought about, hey, we could probably just keep that thing forever and ever. And so who knows? It's not had any major issues. The AC compressor did go out on it, in which we did replace that. But other than that, tires, brakes, oil changes, a whole lot less oil changes now that I'm not driving back and forth to school. And, but that is, <laughs> makes, it, makes it a little bit cheaper to maintain the car as well. So number 18 I got in 2022 is a 95 Jaguar XJ12. Remember that, that nice British racing green Jaguar. I really like Jaguars. Even before I met the Wizard and I was growing up as a kid, I always loved the vintage look of a Jaguar. They're just so cool. They're just pretty. But, and I liked that car. Nothing really was wrong with it. It was just not the car I liked. It was just too big of a car. I really want that second car to be something fun to just zip around town in. And so we had it, you know, it was a fun car. He got, he got things fixed on it, had lots of little issues. Some of the, the, strut mounts where the foamy stuff was falling apart and crumbling. Yeah, he fixed all those things. There are a couple other things he had to address, but nothing major, nothing crazy. And so once we decided, okay, there's something, and then of course, somebody else has a car we could trade for. That's when Hoobie had a 2005 Maserati um, Grand Sport, which was a fun car. It was super fast. It had an F1 transmission. So I got floppy paddles on it, which was fun. And, and it was a good little car going around town, zipping here and doing that. Um, but again, it, it, we're ready to move on to something different. And so that got traded for the FJ Cruiser. And then after the FJ Cruiser, we, we decided, oh, we really love the design of that FJ Cruiser. But we're like, once you own it, we're like, this isn't what we were thinking. We love the outside, but the inside wasn't working for us. I mean, you'd climb in and I think I hit my knee on the dash every time I'd hop in because you had to kind of hop because it was so high and the dash kind of curved up and it was like your knees were covered by the dash. So it was hard to get in when you were tall. So I was like, you wouldn't think a tall vehicle would be a problem for a tall person, but it really was. So that got traded for his infinity he has now. And so <laughs> things kind of Trade, 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 I guess. The last car I have, number 20, is also sitting in the garage right now. It is my BMW Z3. And I really like this one. This, of course, it had quite a bit of deferred maintenance, which we were able to bump up. And the one thing I really love about this car, and it, was, and it took a while. We really did search and search and search for a car. because so I wanted something, again, zip around town in, something that was convertible, something I could have fun in. And that wasn't white or silver or gray. If you notice back there for a while, everything I was owning was white, silver, and gray, considering my Levante is as well. I wanted something that was fun. I wanted a color. And so this one happens to be this eggplant purple, Violet Rolt in German. And so, okay, it's, it's a nice, it's a fun color. It's something different. Unfortunately, 
Um, we're, we're having a fireside chat today because it is one degree outside. Feels like negative 16. So no driving the little convertible today or for probably a while. But that's why we have other cars to drive and not the fun zip around. We're not zipping anywhere today. I might zip over and get a cup of hot tea in the kitchen in a minute. But those are my 20 cars that I have had through my time on this earth. Um, I've never been in a big major accident, um, but I've got some fun stories I can share with you guys in another video on how I learned to drive and fun at some things like that, but that's for a tale for another day. So I hope you've enjoyed my 20 car stories and hopefully you're staying warm where you're at. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, I'd really like you to do that. Anyway, catch you next time.